thing that stands out the most is in the second half, most teams that don't have the strength of character, the will, the desire, they fold. They go away. They get run out. Instead, you battled and took the lead. That we can build on. Welcome, Irish fans, to the first edition of the 2016 season of Inside Notre Dame Football with Brian Kelly. I'm Jack Nolan, coming to you today from the Notre Dame Football Labar Practice Complex. To the nation, Notre Dame's 50-47 double overtime loss at Texas was an instant classic. To Notre Dame's players, coaches, and fans, it was a heartbreaking way to begin the season. After the game, you could see the hurt on the players' faces, but also a resolve and realization that the team cannot afford to carry a dark cloud with them into practice this week with 11 games still remaining in the regular season. I mean, it's a long season. It's game one. Um, you know, I think our team kind of adopted an identity even though we took a loss. And I think getting an identity is important. Uh, the only thing you can say is uh, evaluate the film tomorrow and uh, get back to work. I mean, it's a wake up call. Um, obviously, it's not, it didn't go the way we wanted it tonight, and um, the only thing you can do is keep your head down, keep working, and, and uh, figure out w what went wrong and, and how to improve. Yeah, offense and defense got them really. You know, uh, we caught a pick, got some points on the board fast, and, you know, we definitely, we, we were definitely in a rhythm as a team, you know, uh, special teams and everything. So, so, yeah, I think we did get into a rhythm. Obviously, this is a, uh, a great team who, who put a lot of heart out there. Uh, to come back from the deficit that we did in the second half is obviously a, a plus, but to come up short just really hurts. Inside Notre Dame Football is presented by TireRack.com and brought to you by Team Notre Dame Partners. Coca-Cola, Under Armour, and Gatorade. Inside Notre Dame Football is also brought to you by Bank of America, Canon, Xfinity, Delta Airlines. Proud to be the official airline of Notre Dame Athletics. Nissan, Notre Dame Federal Credit Union, Sirius XM Satellite Radio, and UPS. And here it is with Fulston, who gets off a good run and he's free. Tarian Fulston. I know one of your themes to this team repeatedly leading up to the game was let's get off to a quick start, and you did on offense. Good first drive, you know, really well executed um, in terms of what we wanted to do, good balance between running it and throwing it, nice run from Folston right out of the gates, and I think that that, you know, really got us off the, you know, the kind of momentum swing that we needed um, for our entire team. And it was a coming out party of sorts for Equinemius St. Brown. You caught your first two touchdown passes, both of them outstanding. The second one, spectacular. Yeah, well, he's got to obviously catch it and keep his balance and uh, did an incredible job for a long receiver in his size uh, to have that kind of athleticism to catch it, get his hand down, and not put his elbow down before he gets into the end zone was uh, a pretty amazing feat. I know you were a bit disappointed with the first defensive stand by your team. They did struggle early and didn't get off to a quick start. The touchdown pass early on, uh, it was a great throw by Bouchel. I mean, we were in pretty good coverage. I mean, barely gets his toe in. You know, those are going to happen. I think it was the 16 play drive where we had a number of chances to get off the field. They converted fourth downs. We had some chances on some third downs to get off the field. We missed some tackles. Um, that was probably the one drive that, you know, you, you feel like we got to get off the field here. And, you know, other than that, it was the big play throws, you know, the, the big play throws that we can't give up um, that, that really were probably, for me, uh, the areas that, that have to be shored up immediately. And certainly you're talking about the one late in the first half that set up a touchdown, the one that scored a touchdown beginning of the second half. And things were looking pretty dire for your team at that point. They even had a field goal, but this team came back again. And Kaiser's just terrific in those situations. Well, I mean, I think that there's a confidence level in, in the whole unit. Uh, they believe in the system and what we're running. They believe that if they just stick with the plan and execute, uh, the only thing that's going to stop us is if we don't execute properly. And 
Uh, they went right back down there, got a quick score, and I think that quick score really, you know, got everybody's uh, attention uh, that, look, we're not done here. And uh, really proud of the way the guys battled back into the game. And Deshaun's run was terrific for that first. Great read on the zone. Uh, they were coming down hard on the dive, and um, he stayed patient with it and uh, did a great job of reading the defensive end who came down, turned the shoulders, pulled it, and, and got to the corner of the end zone. People are talking about the tackling. There were a lot of missed tackles. That means the scheme worked. They were in position to make the tackles. You work on tackling all the time. What do you need to do to transfer those drills to the field? Well, you know, they had some big backs that ran through some, some guys. You know, we were in good position. Um, you know, Swoops is a big physical runner. Um, you know, Foreman's a big runner. Give Texas some credit, too. It's a big physical team. And when they, I, the one concern I had is that when those backs get in space, and they did get some space, they're very difficult to bring down. And you can't duplicate that. What was lost in what happened last night, that you went about 20 minutes keeping Texas off the scoreboard. You had five three and outs. So there were times when this scheme worked and these players executed. Yeah, I mean, look, they settled down in the second half, and, you know, it was a seven-point game at the half. Um, you know, we took the lead in the second half, so, you know, we really won the second half. And, and this is a team game. It's offense, defense, and special teams. And if you look at the cumulative of those three units, uh, we played better than Texas in the second half. We need to be better in all three phases, quite frankly, moving forward. And we anticipate that we'll make great progress from week one to week two. Huge play for your team that had it been called this outcome may have been different. It's not the reason, but there was what appeared to be a clear targeting call when Torrey Hunter was hit with a ball he had caught in the end zone. It was not called. You end up getting a field goal block, and you go, not only do you lose the game, you also lose Hunter. Yeah, you know, it's disappointing that, uh, you know, clearly in that instance, uh, he had the ball uh, and it was knocked out because of helmet down with contact. Anything up around the neck and head is. Uh, defined as such um, and, and it wasn't called. It's disappointing that we had replay instituted this year to overturn uh, a call like that if it wasn't called on the field and it's just one of those things that just can't happen when it comes to player safety. You know if, if you didn't have a vested interest everybody's calling the game against Texas an instant classic. There were a lot of great plays made by both teams. Yeah, certainly you're disappointed any time you lose a football game, uh, especially when you expend the kind of energy that we did in double overtime on the road. But, you know, we had a, a number of great things happen with, with some first-time starters. Uh, offensively, Equinemius St. Brown stepped up big. C.J. Sanders, all-purpose yards. You know, defensively, we had a number of young players playing for the first time uh, in a number of positions, and not just freshmen. You know, a lot of really good things to build on, but I think more importantly, Jack, the resiliency that these kids showed down 17 points in the second half. Most teams go away. They don't continue to fight, and I'm proud of the way our guys fought. When receiver and captain Torrey Hunter Jr. was knocked out of the Texas game after that brutal hit in the end zone, the Irish lost not only their most experienced receiver, they also lost the on-field leader of a very talented but very young Notre Dame receiving core. Associate head coach and wide receivers coach Mike Denbrock lets us know why Hunter's leadership of the receivers and their performance will be so important this fall. We've got to be the group that's the most solid, the most counted on, the most consistent of all of the groups we have offensively, because what we're going to do revolves around us. You should take pride in that. Being a Notre Dame wide receiver, the, the offense, you know, basically revolves around us. And, uh, you know, if we're not making plays, then, you know, the offense isn't operating. So, uh, you know, we take on that role with great pride, and um, we, don't, we don't let anybody, you know, slack, no matter who it is, no matter how old you are. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, push it, push it, push it. Good. Good. Excellent one six. You know, Denbrock's a guy that, that doesn't take anything lightly, anybody lightly. Get tighter, a little 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 tighter, stop. 
You know, he expects me to, to be a second coach uh, when he can't be there. Exhale, you motion inside, hey. You motion inside, straight to the flat. Let's pivot. If you read man, if you read zone, you're sitting the soft there. You know, leading into this year, I kind of am right where I want to be as far as, you know, being that guy, being able to take over the role that, you know, Will Fuller, Chris Brown, a lot of these guys had. And I got to replace that leadership role uh, that that is gone now. KJ, make sure you just like one yard inside of him when you come down so he can create a rub for you. We need captains. We need captains of the ship. And and we've got four captains. Tory Hunter, come on up here. This past year and in the spring, um, you know, I just have even more of a role uh, in the offense, uh, being able to just switch from outside to inside, uh, X, W, Z, playing everywhere, just wherever they need me to go, give them my all, uh, try to learn the position as, as best as I can, and, uh, you know, just go out there and give them my all and make plays. <laughs> That's the way to work. That's the way to work. <laughs> we will be a you know very very explosive uh, wide receiver core, and uh, we're gonna go out there and make plays. And um, that's, I think that's what people can look forward to this season. Uh, you know we're, we're gonna work hard to to go out there and and give give the the crowd the best show possible. <laughs> What's up? What's up? They'll be excited about what's going to happen in the 2016 season. First car you ever drove? Jeep Liberty. Favorite musical group or artist? Lil Wayne. Favorite class? Math. One thing the public would be surprised to learn about you? I uh, play lacrosse senior year. What is your favorite spot at Notre Dame? LaFon. Player on the team most like you? Oh, uh, Drew Tranquil. Get up early or sleep in? Get up early. Best nickname on the team and who has it? Terry Jewelry. Best player to room with on the road? Drew Tranquil. One thing you always hear from Coach Light in practice? Do it again. Hardest player to tackle on the team? Uh, Josh Adams. Best singer on the team? Cole Luke. Best dancer on the team? Micah Dutraway. Best comedian on the team? Jay Hayes. Best comedian on the coaching staff? Coach Burris. Best dresser on the team? Um, Avery Sebastian. Worst dresser on the team? Me. <laughs> Best thing about playing for Notre Dame? Uh, the fans, the legacy, um, tradition, and the golden helmets. Sean Crawford, you've successfully completed the 60-second drill in Inside Notre Dame football. Thank, Thank you. you. It takes a number of positive personal attributes to succeed as a Notre Dame football player. You have to be smart and disciplined to succeed in the classroom. You have to be disciplined, athletic, and tough to win on the football field and to bounce back from gut-wrenching losses. To help this year's team reach new levels of necessary toughness, the coaching staff invited a group of former and active military personnel to campus to put the team through what they call the program. At the program, we have one mission. We develop better leaders and create more cohesive teams through shared adversity. That we only grow as individuals and as teams when we get outside our comfort zone. Man, you're gonna be outside of your comfort zone next couple days. There's no football, there's no sleds, there's no cones out there. You're not doing stuff that you're gonna be good at. Your physical toughness, it's gonna to run out at some point. We're gonna show you how far you can go on just mental toughness alone when you're cold, when you're wet, when you're miserable, when you're hungry. Your mission for this quarter is to be one team with one heartbeat for 16 minutes. That's it, for 16 minutes. Don't slow down. Your teammates are hurting, don't slow down. Everything is habit for me. Winning's a habit, losing's a habit, holding each other accountable, that's a habit. Communicating all the things your coaches want you to do, they're habits. So we're gonna build the habit of attacking. Pain's only gonna get worse tomorrow.
about your teammates here right and left, you'll do everything in your power to make sure he's good. So you hold each other accountable because you care about each other. You gotta set the example, but you're not gonna lead by it. You're only halfway done. Once you've set the example, you hold everyone else accountable to the same. Ready! Ready. Attack! One, two, three! One. One, two, three! One, two, three! Up! Up. Down! Yeah. Up! We want to attack the best opponents. We want the toughest schedule. We want to climb the highest mountains, run the fastest races. None of you have to be here this morning. None of you have to be here at Notre Dame. You chose that. You wanted to go to a higher institution with higher standards. You chose this life. It's time now for the experts at TireRack.com question of the week for Coach Kelly. This week's question comes from Matthew Yule from Mississauga, Ontario, Canada. Coach, who are some of the players we could possibly see step up and play a pivotal role this season for Notre Dame? Well, I think you saw him last night. I mean, you know, Equinemia St. Brown steps up. Uh, C.J. Sanders comes in the game, plays for us. I think uh, from, from a defensive standpoint, uh, Sean Crawford, first-time starter. Uh, Devin Studd still played quite a bit for us. Julian Love. I think you're going to continue to see more and more young players. Uh, Jalen Elliott played uh, in the last series, so you're going to see more young players uh, step on the field. Next up for the Irish, the home opener against the Nevada team, coming off a dramatic season opening overtime win against Cal Poly. Adding a little spice to the matchup, the Wolfpack is coached by former Notre Dame assistant coach Brian Polian. Well, they run the ball effectively, um, you know, aggressive defensively and, you know, well coached. You know, Brian Polian is very familiar with, uh, you know, Notre Dame having coached here. He knows the environment. He knows what to expect. You know, they've got a good back. They've got the ability to throw the ball off of their play action and some, some really nice receivers on the perimeter. So, you know, it strikes on a, on a very wide front. They can hit it inside. They can hit it outside and then the play action pass. So it's a very effective offense. That's why it's still uh, one of the, the staples in college football, the inside zone read option. This is a big game for Nevada. Obviously, they're going on the road with nothing to lose coming in here, you know, excited about the opportunity. So, you know, we've got to worry about ourselves. We've got to get some rest. We've got to get our guys back. Uh, it was a physical football game, um, and we've got to be ready to defend our home stadium. That will do it for this week's show. We'll be back next week to break down the Nevada game and give you more behind-the-scenes insights into the Notre Dame football program. Until then, thanks so much for watching, and as always, go Irish! Inside Notre Dame Football is presented by TireRack.com and brought to you by Team Notre Dame Partners. Coca-Cola, Under Armour, and Gatorade. Inside Notre Dame Football is also brought to you by Bank of America, Canon, Xfinity, Delta Airlines, proud to be the official airline of Notre Dame Athletics, Nissan, Notre Dame Federal Credit Union, Sirius XM Satellite Radio, and UPS.